welcome to Food Truck 101 from beginner to winner. I am your host, Lauren Bell. I am the co-owner of Double Trouble Philly Cheesesteaks. And I own that business with my twin sister, Lori, and her husband, Keith. So welcome. Welcome, everybody. How you doing? Joining us tonight in every morning. Are you with me? So far. Okay. Joining us tonight and every Monday night is the author of this book, Food Truck 101. I call him author extraordinaire and the creator and founder of this fake food truck training group right here on Facebook. Almost 22,000 members. So we're almost there. So you'll see my big shout out soon. <laughs> Bill Moore has written not only Food Truck 101, he's written other great books such as Putting the Cart Before the Dog or Taking It to the Street. Bill and Melissa spend countless hours maintaining the integrity and the professionalism of this group. So we thank them uh, so very much. I tell you, Bill has managed large restaurant chains, food trucks, hot dog carts. He is the guru in the industry. He brings 44 years plus experience to this industry. So please help me welcome to the platform no other than Mr. Bill Moore himself. Thank you so much. Let me let this one last person in. All right. It's amazing that you went through that introduction and didn't lag one time. So so definitely the internet's in my favor, at least. So you can get to introduce me. <laughs> awesome. Yes, I, I love the introductions you give. Melissa says my head swells every week that you talk. So works for me. <laughs> we got to address one thing before we even get into the topic tonight, and that was your announcement yesterday. Yes, yes. So uh, yesterday, by surprise, I was officially taken off the market, and I was given two rings yesterday. One was um, a friendship ring because David promised to be my friend first. And then he gave me an engagement ring on top of that um, to let me know that um, I'm officially off the market. And yes, and we are pursuing uh, a, a great relationship. He's a great man. He's a, um, he's a pastor. He's a musician. He's a wonderful man of God. I am blessed. And um, it hasn't been a long standing relationship, but I tell you, when you're um, at a place, where, where you belong and, and things come in order, things just come um, come together. So thank you, Bill. Thank you for acknowledging that. And stay tuned, guys. I'll keep you up to date. <laughs> yes, you better. Because I know where you live now, so we'll come out there if things don't work. <laughs> oh, and Bill, guess what? He's 6'4". Wow. <laughs> somebody I can look up to, at least. Yeah, you can look him straight in the eye, Bill. If something ain't right, you fix it. <laughs> I'll fix it. I got your back. All right, let's jump into the book. You guys continue to uh, give her the congratulations in the chat because that's just cool to see. And I even put it here on our little page here. Congratulate Lauren on her engagement and two little wedding rings there. So I'm super thrilled. and I hope that you guys have many years of a loving relationship and still have food trucks too. Don't give up the food trucks. Absolutely, thank you. You're welcome. All right, this week we're talking about social media. The name of the chapter is Build It and They Will Want to See Your Social Media. So I'm gonna go through some of the high points of the, the chapter. Believe it or not, there's people that don't think you need social media. And there's actually a couple of people that will tell you outright social media doesn't work. And to anyone that ever says that to me, I tell them social media works if you're willing to work it, just like your food truck can be successful if you're willing to work it. How you make social media successful for yourself is it's got to be social. And that's the first thing. It's a conversation back and forth. It's like the old party lines, like I'm sure Carlos can remember and some of the other folks in the group that are uh, a little aged like I am. Party lines is when you picked up the telephone when it had a cord on it and you had to listen to make sure nobody else was on the line before you started to make a phone call because you were in a neighborhood and everybody on the neighborhood could hear that phone call. 
Social media is the same way. Instead of it being verbal, it's textual. So you post something out there and there's going to be, you know, dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people see it. And if you're not responding when they talk to you, it's like you hung up the phone on them. So your social media has to be social. You have to have that conversation both ways. And you really do need social media. Now, the question is, which one do you need? Some areas, some cities favor different social media platforms based on the age of the people in that town. For instance, if you're in a community like I'm in, where it's a little bit older folks, it's going to be more uh, Facebook because Facebook tends to skew for older people. If you're in an area where there's lots of college students because you're in a, a college town, for instance, like Tallahassee or Gainesville, Florida, both of those tend to skew towards the more recent social media platforms like uh, Snapchat or TikTok and Instagram, Melissa just said. All of those are super important. There's no reason why you can't be on all of them, but you need to favor the ones that most of your guests are going to be coming from. So you got to have social media. Another question people ask, and I wrote a whole little section on this in, the, in that particular chapter, is when should you start your social media? The social media should really be the second thing you do after you commit to buying that food truck or you commit to, yes, I'm going to do a street food vending business, whatever it is, whether it's a tent, whether it's a hot dog cart, whether it's a trailer or a truck, you've got to start building excitement towards your eventual opening. And you can post all kinds of things in between the day that you make that decision and the day you actually get open. Don't worry about being bored or, or being boring. What you want to do is let people know, hey, I've got a new business coming and I want you guys to get excited about it. Help me share this business around the city and around the, the county that I'm in so that when I do get open, I have a nice strong following. You can share pictures of the build. You can share pictures of your, your family and what they're doing to help get organized. You, know, you can talk about the recipes you're testing. You can post recipes. You can do a little video on YouTube about what you're planning with the uh, the particular food business you're going to get in. But you want to start at ASAP and then continue to build on it. One thing I, I would like to share is I was talking to uh, Chris Pearson from Pearson Street um, Smash Burgers and Melts. They're out of Canada. They started last year in June, I believe. And then they closed because it gets so darn cold in Canada. They closed at the end of October and just reopened, I think, last week or maybe the week before. But in any case, she was sharing with me her social media uh, numbers. And they're in a small community that's about a half hour outside of Ottawa, Canada. And she has several hundred thousand followers already and engagements on her post. The numbers are just absolutely amazing. And all she does is what I'm talking about. She engages people. She talks to people. She posts pictures of the food all throughout the day and the really good looking pictures of her food. She's always sharing events that are happening in, in her area so that people start the conversation and associate their business with that particular uh, event that might be going on. So it's, it's paramount that you have social media. And I don't know why that says you some type of guest loyalty program. I must have skipped over that one. If that's in the chapter, I certainly don't remember it. But in any case, you do need a guest loyalty program. It should be associated with your, your uh, social media as well. Because what you can do with it is let people know on your social media, I've got a loyalty program, come in and ask about it. And I can get you signed up for it. So let's talk real quick about the social media foundations. And this is across any platform. They all have some type of a profile. And you need to build the profile so that it's consistent across all the different platforms. So ideally, you're able to get the same screen name for Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and YouTube and all of the other social media that you might be on. So that way people can see the same name no matter where they are. And you want to have that profile information filled out. You want your logo. You want pictures. You want Pretty much every line that they ask you to fill out something about yourself and about the business, fill it out. 
You can always go back and tweak it later, but at least get some information there. The second thing that you want to do when you're building your social media foundation is respond promptly when someone comments or someone tags you or someone is talking to you. Respond as quickly as you can. Of course, if you're in lunch service, you can't respond immediately, but as soon as you come out of lunch service, do those responses. The responding is like I mentioned earlier, it's a conversation you're having. So you're, you're going back and forth with your loyal guests. You wanna use platform metrics whenever you place paid ads and you wanna use a paid ad over a boosted ad or a boosting post. And that's specific to Facebook. When you have a post and you place a post on your business page, Facebook will send you a little uh, advertisement basically and say, hey, would you like to post, would you like to boost this post for $10 or $5? And they'll tell you how many people that they think it will, uh, will be shown to. You don't want to post, I'm sorry, you don't want to boost a post because your opportunity for new eyes to see it are very limited. But if you place an ad, where you write an ad and put it on Facebook and use their ad program, you can actually select what kind of people are going to be seeing your particular ad. You can select something as easy as, um, you know, you can get it all the way down to families, or you can get it down to single parents, you can get it down to, you know, an age group. And you can target the folks that you think are going to be most likely to eat your food. And the, the cost is a little bit more when you do a paid ad, but you use the metrics to see, okay, I ran this ad, I was targeting, you know, 35 to 45 year olds, and I got a great response. So, hey, we're going to stick with that. But if you don't get a great response, then you know to target a different group, but you got to use those metrics to know how your ads are doing. Use your reviews and comments from one social media platform to go to another social media platform. So if you're on Facebook and you get two or three really good uh, reviews or really good uh, comments, just copy those and then post them as a picture on your Twitter or on your Instagram or on um, you know, TikTok. You can make a series of them. You can do something cool with the videos. But the idea is to get people to see uh, all the different content that you, that you have across the different platforms. So don't be afraid of, of copying one thing Oops, I jumped ahead too quick. Copying one thing too quickly. And then the planning to fail is a, a title of one of the sections. And what I'm talking about there is you got to have a plan for your social media. And it's not only I'm going to do social media posts, you know, a half hour a day every day that uh, I'm in operation. You want to plan out. Am I going to do a video post? Am I going to do just a photograph post? Am I going to do just a text post? You want to have that plan laid out so when you sit down at the computer or sit in front of your phone or your iPad and start to do some type of an ad, you're able to come up with something because today's going to be a text. Okay, so I'll, I'll think of a text to post. The more that you plan, the easier that it becomes when you sit down to make the post because if you have no plan, and you go, oh man, it's, it's already 11 o'clock. I need to make a, a social media post real quick. You sit there and you don't know what to do. But if you got a plan, then you know, okay, I need to do a text post today because that's what I do on Mondays. Or I need to do a short video. That's what I do on Tuesdays. So plan out your social media. And again, don't be afraid to cross utilize stuff. Something you do today, you can certainly use two months down the road because most people won't remember what you did today. All right. And Bill. Yes. Bill, that's a, that's a very good point um, that you bring up because if you don't plan, it gets away from you so fast. Yeah. So fast. And so, you know, people don't know how, to, you know, you can schedule some of those posts. Like he said, if you plan it, you can schedule it. You can pre-create those pro posts. So they go out. Lori and I have slammed ourselves so many times by not planning out properly, waiting, thinking, oh, we'll go set up and then we'll post and then we get slammed or we get an unexpected crowd and those posts never go out. 
And so we really do ourselves a disservice. Um, so that's a that's a really good point um, that you bring up, Bill. I'm glad you said that because actually today on the podcast, I'll go ahead and plug the podcast. I was talking about how I used to do things and I laid out my whole day from the time that I got up in the morning until I eventually got back home and what I did. And one of the things that I talk about is the social media. You know, I spent a half hour every morning getting on the social media and planning out what I was going to be doing. And like you said, scheduling out what I was going to be doing. So even though it might be, you know, eight in the morning and I'm getting ready to leave the house, I could have two or three posts already on the scheduler to go out at, you know, 10 and 10 30 and 11 or whenever I wanted to those posts to actually hit. So you can it, take advantage of every bit of technology you can find as far as scheduling goes. Don't be afraid of it. Just, just learn it. I mean, I'm self-taught on everything. You know, people say you're so smart. Well, no, I'm not. I just sit and I'll watch a whole bunch of YouTube until I finally see somebody that teaches something in a way that I can understand it. You know, all those spreadsheets and stuff, that's just me self-taught. That might be why some of them are a little clumsy, but they work. All right. So again, what platform, whatever platform makes sense to your area, but I really encourage you to be on the popular ones. Definitely, for sure, you want to be on Facebook. You want to be on Instagram. Uh, probably, you need to be on Snapchat. You need to have a TikTok because TikTok is the, the biggie right now. And it's a video platform. The neat thing about TikTok is it can really explode your other social media platforms and explode your business if something takes off. I know that a lot of people are like, well, what can I do on a TikTok? You know, TikToks are a lot of real quick cuts and real quick edits so that, you know, the video looks cool. You see a lot of people that are trying on clothes and they'll take the, you know, the shirt and they'll fluff it like this. And then the cut has a shirt on their body. You know, the same thing we could do with a recipe, you know, just the quick cuts. You know, here's the, the salt, here's the water, here's the oil, here's the, you know, the cabbage, whatever you're, you're making. All the different ingredients could be lined out. And then the quick cuts to show them being applied. And you could have, you know, whatever music that is copyright, <laughs> copyright free, but whatever, you know, background sounds that you got, or you could narrate it yourself. I mean, just do it. Don't worry about how you sound. I mean, you guys know I sound country. I am absolutely um, as much of a, a hick as you can possibly get. I've lost a lot of my accent, but it's still there. It is still there. And you just got to get over it. My son and I did a YouTube channel a couple of years ago. It's still there. If you guys want to listen to how I sounded a few years ago, and we were just playing Minecraft and some other games and just having a lot of fun. But once you get used to hearing your voice, you just don't really care anymore. You just go out and do it. You know, so you guys just get, just do it. Don't be afraid because I can promise you my very first uh, video that we did on the, um, it was called Emerald Coast Family Gaming. The very first video we did is nowhere near what our last one was. So there's a learning process and it's okay. Everybody goes through it. Just get out there and do it. I know that Lauren does a lot of her own videos and, you know, since I've known Lauren for a long, long time, the videos that she does now are a, a thousand times better than the, the earlier videos. And that's just from mm -hmm. having done so many. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I mean, you narrate very well now. You sound very professional. Thank you, Bill. That's an honor coming from you. <laughs> also, that, let me tell you why you're talking about TikTok. If you go in the search engine and put in food truck cleanup, food truck, anything, it will give you just rows and rows of videos on that particular topic. And you could use the same music or whatever's going, whatever the fad is, and just add in your own five second videos. So if you guys aren't familiar with TikTok, grab yourself a millennial and go in there and play <laughs> around. <laughs> grab one that you know. <laughs> Don't just yeah, grab a Yeah, really. Yeah, I can right. see the ads now. Food truck, uh, 
arrested for kidnapping. <laughs> So yeah, that's a good feature on TikTok. It is, it is, and you got to get used to using the the search engines and and all the different, um, the keywords that they use, and all the the um, the websites that will gather up all those keywords that are popular for food trucks or you know marketing or whatever the the particular topic is, and a lot of those will give you inspiration because you read down through them, and go, oh, I can do that. And you just go out and you know make the little short video or whatever. It's pretty cool, but you got to get used to them. The point I was making about TikTok is if you have one that goes just semi-viral, doesn't even have to go you know millions of views. If it just goes thousands of views, that's going to be a big deal to your business because now you're going to have more people that are going to be interested in your business. They're going to get onto your other social media and start asking you questions. Hey, what do you sell? What's on it? How's it taste? All of those things become opportunities for you to, to create a raving fan of your business because you respond to them on social media. And then you encourage other people that may be a little bit too timid to ask the question outright, but they'll read the question and go, oh, they sell something I really enjoy. I think I will go check them out. So just get on social media and make it a, a decent part of your day. Um, the next thing there is automation that's one of the things we had talked about earlier, Facebook has for Instagram and Facebook, since they're joined right now, when you have the, uh, the business manager, you can post one post and it goes to both of them, both Instagram and Facebook. There are other programs out there and other services that will expand that reach and, and let you cross post on Twitter and Facebook and um, you know, Snapchat and all those all at the same time. So you just got to create a post that will fit within whatever the, ever the parameters are of the particular um, platform you're trying to post on. But it's one post created, you know, push a couple of buttons and then it goes out when you schedule it to. And those services have a little bit of a cost to them. But if it saves you a half hour a day, the cost is well worth it. So check into ways to automate yourself. Now, the book has in this chapter 58 social media prompts. And I'm just going to randomly grab a couple. And these are just things to help you think about, you know, you're sitting there going, what should I post today? What should I do? Well, here, the very first one is just answer a frequently asked question. And if no one's asking you questions, go to another food truck and see what folks are asking them. And then just act like they're asking you the same question and then answer it. You can do an ask me anything. And this is after you've got a little bit of a following. You go live, say in the afternoon, after you slow down for lunch, you go live and just tell everybody, hey, ask me any questions you got about the food truck, anything you wanna know about the recipes and answer a handful of questions. There's a number of people that do this as a live on Facebook. For instance, there's one husband and wife team. They make uh, wood door hangers and they get up every morning and they go out and they're cutting the wood and painting the wood and all that. And they do a Facebook live while they're doing that work when they're doing the quiet part of the work. And they'll just answer whatever questions pop up and they'll talk to people. And once you do that, enough people get used to you being there and they kind of look forward to being able to talk to you. Just like a lot of folks, like tonight we're at 30 people. This is the first time that I can remember us hitting 30 this go around. People get used to us being here every Monday night and they want to join because hey, we're, the, we're offering good advice, but we're also creating that camaraderie. So you can do the same, same thing. You can do a before and after photo. You know, show what the food truck looked like when you got it. Now what's it look like today? Show what your first menu looked like compared to the one you got today. You can celebrate a milestone. And it doesn't have to be some big, huge milestone. You know, we did $100,000 this year. You could celebrate doing $50. I mean, it's a big deal to you. Celebrate it. Because I can promise you, whatever your sales are today, somebody wishes they had those sales. 
you know, I did, like I told you, I've done a $38 day before. And there's people that don't do $38 days. So celebrate milestones and be proud of them. You know, we have 21,000 people we were talking earlier before we started, 22,000. That's a big number, but there are groups out there that are significantly bigger, not necessarily in the food truck world, but there's groups out there that have half a million people in them. But I'm proud of my 22,000 and I'm proud of the next hundred that we'll put in probably sometime tonight because that's a big deal to me. And I want to share that it's a big deal to me. You guys can do the same thing. Share those milestones. You can talk about a competitive advantage that you have, and it could be that you offer delivery. It could be that you have pickup, that you do catering, you do online ordering. You have a unique item that nobody else in your town sells. It doesn't really matter what it is. It just shows that you're a little bit different. And this is something that you're proud of. You know, even if you sell a hamburger, you might have a different mix of your on your meat. It's just your point of difference. Let people know it exists. And you can get into the mundane things. Share your favorite kitchen tool. It doesn't have to be one you use on the truck if you want to use at home. You know, just share a photo, get people talking about it. You know, hey, I don't use this on the food truck, but man, this is an awesome thing. I wish they made a commercial commercial version. Feature your team if you hire new people. Get their picture out there on the uh, the Facebook and, and your Instagram, because what that also does is when you tag them, now their friends and family are going to start to look at your business and your business page. And now you're getting new eyes looking at your business. You, you could talk about your favorite recipe, and it doesn't necessarily have to be your recipe, something that you use on the food truck. I know people get really crazy about, I don't want to share my recipe. I hate to tell you this, but if somebody, if a chef comes to your food truck and eats your food, they can pretty well tell you what's in it and they can recreate it pretty darn quickly. So don't try to stub up about your recipes. And if you don't want to share them, don't share them. Pick another one. Say, hey, I love cooking this when I'm at home. You're just talking about things that you do, letting people get to know you as a person. Take photos of your guests, tag them. Same deal. New eyes are seeing those photographs. Definitely get them taking a bite of your sandwiches or a bite of your food. Double trouble refers to that as the bobblehead effect when they're asking how the food's doing and they got their uh, mouth full of food and they're just shaking their head. Yes, they're just bobbling their head because the food's so awesome. Get those videos. I mean, that's just a perfect video every time. Every time you ask them and they're bobbling their head. Yes, it's great. It's awesome. Put that on a video. Put a whole bunch of those on a TikTok. You know, five or 10 of those quick edits, different people will do in that. Be an awesome little video. You could post something about the industry. You could post something about food trucks in general. You could do an infographic. I mean, there's all kinds of infographics out there. It could be about your area. It could be about food trucks. You could give them a money saving tip. You can talk about, hey, we do a combo. Most people don't take advantage of this. If you buy a combo, you're going to save, you know, a dollar, 50 cents, whatever. Or you could do a secret or a loyalty program only menu. You know, and this menu is only available to people that are in our loyalty program. You know, all those little kind of things. Just share about your business. You could do contests. You could do rewards. You know, share a contest winner. You could do a sneak peek if you're going to be doing um, a new product. You, know, you can start out, if you're doing hamburgers, for instance, and you're going to be adding a new topping or a new barbecue sauce or whatever, you can start out with the hamburger patty and then build up you know, what's going to be on it to get people thinking about what's, what's this new one going to be, what's it going to have on it. You can post inspirational posts, you know, helpful routines, whether it's business routines, something you do at home, how you get through the day, because just as busy as you are, there's a whole bunch of other people in different works, different walks of life that might like to know how to get through the day like you can get through it. How do they handle the kids? You know, how do you homeschool and handle kids and still run a business? All those kind of things. Your life has unique points that somebody else needs to hear. So keep that in mind. There's something you can share that will inspire somebody. All you got to do is just 
share it. And don't worry about if it's a big deal because there's somebody needs to hear it. You could share your, your favorite inspirational quote. You could share an article about somebody you find inspiring. You could share a win that your business has or your kids. You know, if you, your kid hit a home run, post that. If your kid won a baking contest at school, post that. If your kid got the A for the very first time in their life. That's a big deal. Post it. Share gratitude. Thank people that inspire you, that got you started, people that have helped you along the way. And you can just share the people that help keep you sane. Like Melissa keeps me sane all the time. She keeps me very well grounded. Let people know that you appreciate not only the individual, because at some point they may not be there anymore, but you need to let the people that follow you know that, hey, I appreciate people in my life. You can do something funny. You uh, post a picture and ask them to caption this picture. You can get one of those changeable letter signs and put that as a post and make funny things with it. You could ask a question and fill in the blank, get people talking to you. You could do a worst selfie contest and post one of your worst selfies and say, hey, can you beat this? And you know, somebody will, will certainly give it an attempt. You can show your human side. You can post your favorite book. You can post what your guilty pleasure is, whether it's you know fishing or, or just sitting by the pool or taking a walk, those kind of things. You can talk about your favorite online course, your favorite podcast, your favorite YouTube channel, kids' photos, you know, your life balance tips, time-saving tips. And then, of course, you can do just the real basic thing, invite your friends and family to like your business page. People forget that sometimes. And as you gain new friends and family, you need to remind them, hey, I've got a business, please come like my page. Because when they come like your page it expands who is being shown your business page especially if you have a marriage for instance lauren so as his family starts to like your business page then their friends and their family that you've never met will be able to see double troubles business page because it expands that network so don't be afraid to remind people that don't forget to like my business page i got a business and i need your help then you can do the generic things, you know, Motivation Monday, Thankful Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday Wisdom. See, I can't talk, but I'm here doing a video. You got Throwback Thursdays, you got Friday night, Saturday morning, Sunday fun day. You can mention an influencer. If you know what influencers are, that's somebody that's local, that may come around and do videos about restaurants and food trucks and that type of thing, mention them. Mention a follower, somebody that uh, comes to your food truck frequently. Celebrate them. Be thankful that they come to your food, food truck frequently. And I end that chapter with a quote. It's by uh, Seth Godin, I believe is the pronunciation. Again, I'm from Kentucky. I can barely spell. So don't expect me to be able to read. Uh, he says that people don't buy goods and services. They buy relationships and they buy stories and they buy magic. And that's what you're creating with your social media. You got to give people a reason to come see you. Because we all know there's about a million food trucks out there. And you got to set yours apart by actually being a human being. And letting people know that, hey, I'm just like you. All right, next week, well, I'm just jumping way ahead. Next week. Those were great. great yeah. And you're breaking Can up. You? Oh, sorry. It's okay. I know you're saying something good. I just don't know what she, it was. She was, she was saying, I already, my twin telepathy kicked in. <laughs> she was saying that those were some great ideas and she's extra, extra motivated to get us going. So now we're about to set it off. All right. I know you're going to, because you guys already but did. You do for talking, talking.